In this video, I'll show you how Peek upgrades your Unity workflow. Peek is a collection of tools that makes using Unity faster, more intuitive, and fun, whether you like the default workspace, you want one less window panel in your way, or you'd like to do away with them all and work completely full screen. I'm going to do some work in this scene to walk through everything you can do with Peek. As you can see, selecting objects displays a scene toolbar with all the components that you normally find in the inspector window panel. On the toolbar, you can click open the Game Object Inspector, the Transform, or any component that's a part of the game object. You can access these quickly by holding Alt and pressing a number, so I'll press Alt and 6 to inspect the material. In the top right corner, you can pin this window and move it. That's helpful in this case because I'd like to see the color changes I'm making on the material. You can also quick pin inspector windows by clicking on the icon and then pressing space. To close the inspector window, press space again. In the top left, there are tabs which have your Unity windows, like the hierarchy, the project window, the game window, or any other window you'd like to have quick access to. Clicking on the pin icon switches the tabs from pop-up to pinned mode, where multiple windows can be opened, resized, or moved. Right now, I just want to move the game window up into the corner, and then I'll resize it a little bit. Okay, then I'll close it. And this time when I open it up again, I'll use the shortcut, Alt, Shift, and a number. So Alt, Shift, 3 opens up the game window again. You can see the window is pinned exactly how I left it. And then I'll press Alt, Shift, 3 again to close the window. What tabs you have here depends on what you have up outside of full screen. I'll press Shift and Space to exit full screen. And then I'll go to Window and add uh, a Lighting Settings window. Then I'll dock it behind everything, shift space back into full screen, and now I have a handy tab for the lighting settings. I'll click on the tab to close it, but you can also close windows with escape, and you can deselect objects with escape. Let's add something to the scene. Holding control and shift gives you a create gizmo. Wherever you click, you can place an asset. I can search through my project folders to find what I'm looking for, uh, but it's way faster to use Peek's Fuzzy Finder because I can just type a couple letters, FR, and it will guess what I'm looking for, FireFX. I'm pretty sure I have a point light for this somewhere in my hierarchy. To quickly find it, I can press Control F, and now I have a global hierarchy where I can use the Fuzzy Finder engine to look for my point light. There it is, I'll double click on it, and then in the scene toolbar, I'll go to the game object inspector to enable it, give it a better name, and then I'll go into the light component to turn on the hard shadows. All right, that's that. I'll close up the light component and press escape to deselect. Not only is it faster to build out our scene, we can quickly iterate and make changes. It's honestly a dream come true. <laughs> Let me show you. So let's swap out these summer trees. So the first thing in the toolbar is the game object inspector. And if you right click on it, you get a context menu, which has the option to replace. And just by typing a couple letters, I can find a fall tree. Okay, then I'll scale it down a little bit. We can replace things even faster with the shortcut Alt and R. And I'll select this little tree and the other little one to show you that with Alt R, you can also mass replace objects, which is a huge time saver. And I think I want to get rid of one of these trees, so I'll click on it and then disable it in the Game Object Inspector. Let's make this house into more of a neighborhood. I'll select the ground and press Alt-R to replace it with a road. That grass material is wrong, so to fix it, I'll select another object with the right one, and then I can just click and drag the material icon to the other object. Now I want to group all this up. I'll hold Shift and select everything, and then I'll press Ctrl-G, which automatically gives me a text field to name the parent empty that this group is under. I'll press Enter for OK, and then Alt-Shift-1 to bring up the hierarchy, so you can see everything is grouped up under the named parent. In the Scene toolbar, in the Game Object Inspector, Peek gives us a one-click Create Prefab button. Then you can save it wherever. I'll duplicate a few more instances with Ctrl-D. I think I want to add a mailbox so the neighbors can write letters to each other. I'll hold Ctrl-Shift, 
left click, and then type mail. And there it is, mailbox. I'll reposition it. With an object selected, if I press space, I get a local hierarchy. I can see that the mailbox is conveniently in my house prefab. When you place something, it's automatically a sibling of whatever you've placed it on. Here, the mailbox is a sibling of the ground. I'll go up to the prefab to show you what I mean. I'll press space again. Now we can see that the mailbox and the ground are both children of the same parent. To apply the changes to the prefab, I'll go into the Game Object Inspector, into Overrides, and then click Apply All. It's not necessary to work completely full screen like this. I'll exit full screen and close the inspector panel to have more space. I like keeping up either the hierarchy or the project window. With the project window, it's nice to see all the assets I have, but watch what happens when I drag out a pumpkin. The pumpkin is in front of the view, but if I click on the transform inspector in the hierarchy, I can see it's nowhere near the ground. And then of course, I have organization work to do in the hierarchy. So peek is useful even with the project window open because in using control shift create the create gizmo, I can quickly grab what I want and it's in the right place, both in the scene and in the hierarchy. Like the mailbox, the pumpkin is a sibling of the ground it was placed on and they share the same parent. Now let's just have the hierarchy window open. We have all the same tools in the hierarchy to inspect any component on any game object. Here, I can also inspect a material and change the color. I can also select multiple objects in the hierarchy, right-click on the name or the preview icon, and get the context menu to do mass replace. Left-clicking on the preview icon brings up the game object inspector, and so I can take away the grass. I'll go down to the campfire to disable the light, uh, but I also want to show you that it's really easy to add components. So I'll just click on this plus, and I have a uh, fire flicker script here. And then to take it off, I just right click and then select remove component. Definitely check out the peak manual for a handy list of the shortcuts and more in-depth info of things I haven't covered in this overview. Before I go, I wanted to mention that in your preferences, there's a lot of options to customize peak, like when the scene toolbar or tabs appear, uh, you can change the order of your tabs. One thing I've had enabled is the preview icons. Even though the icons are small, they give a better idea of what things are than just the name alone, and that's really helpful for stuff like these rocks. All right, that about covers it. We're really excited to share Peak with you, and we want to thank everyone who helped us make it something we couldn't live without. Take care, and have fun getting a little bit more lost in your Unity worlds with Peak.